when you look at these changes, it kind of starts to beg the question, why do we need MCP? Anthropic just dropped a new announcement around MCP, and I think it's actually pretty interesting. Um, there's three new things in here. Let's we'll actually just do a tear down a bit of a reaction vid here. There's a, a tool search tool which is focused on reducing sort of context usage, big problem in MCP. There is a, a programmatic tool calling, which is really quite interesting. And then finally, the third piece, and I guess this is MCP's birthday, the 25th of November, I believe that was the date, 25th of November 2024 is when MCP was first released. And then there is tool use examples where you can include examples of how to call the tool inside the tool definition. But let's go through it. Let's go through it in some detail, actually. So uh, opening, you know, we want to build effective agents. They need to work with unlimited tool libraries and stuffing every definition into the context up front causes problems where you use up a ton of your context window. I think there's an example they give where they talk about loading, let's see where it is, yeah, loading these tools in. So let's imagine you wanna do GitHub, Slack, Sentry, Grafana, and Splunk, then you are using sort of 55,000 tokens before you've done anything. Um, just by loading that in. And it's been a big topic for folks in the MCP space where they have been coming up with all kinds of, you know, I'll call it hacks to work around this. One is to create things like toolkits where you create subsets of these tools specifically for a task. But it's quite hard to know what you're going to need a priori and design a toolkit around that. That's not never was ideal. Um, I've seen folks do some dynamic stuff where they take advantage of the idea that MCP can signal to the MCP client that it should reload which tools are available. And then they do this hacky stuff around the most recently used tools. They keep those in the available tool set and remove others. But, you know, it feels really hacky. And then another solution I've seen, which also felt a little bit hacky until it was today formalized, is the idea of having two tools. One was called search for a tool and the other was called execute the tool, which was kind of a, a weird RPC wrapper around RPC. But it turns out what they've done with this tool search tool is actually take one of those ideas and just natively build it into the Claude MCP client. This isn't actually, as far as I can tell here, this is not part of the MCP spec. This is not an update to the MCP spec. It actually builds on the MCP spec without modifying it from what I can tell. So that's really interesting actually. It's not a it's not a change to the MCP specification. Instead, but what it, what the MCP client is doing now is doing some smart stuff. So with the tool search tool, um, and you can see here this like pretty graph that shows you what difference can be achieved in terms of how much context window is used by MCP tools versus not. You can see here the 72,000 tokens in here for MCP. Um, what, what they do is they give you a way of adding an MCP tool that is essentially a search that the MCP client is aware of and that Claude is aware of. And so it will then use that that smartly. And to tell it whether your tool is available for this, you basically add some metadata to the tool information that says, hey, this is available for deferred loading. I believe you can do this at the MCP server level also. And in that case, if you start searching for GitHub stuff, it'll find the right tools and load them dynamically into the context window. And if you want to add this tool, it's as simple as adding, I believe this is how this works. I haven't tried any of this yet in, in real life. I'm just reading off the spec here and, and trying to do my best to understand it. But if I understand correctly, then what they're doing here is they take you know, that you add this tool here with little information on this as the type is this, and that will add the search capability, which the MCP client will kind of uh, just use your tools list and provide the search for you. You don't need to build the search or do any more work other than register that that tool and say which ones can be deferred loaded. And here's an example of how to um, have the entire serve deferred loading. Um, so when do you want to use this? Well, obviously, it's probably a little bit slower. There's a latency hit because now it's got to do the tool search before it can invoke the actual MCP tool itself. But I think that's a small price to pay. You know, we're not, we're not really at a point where we're fighting for milliseconds here when we're dealing with LLMs anyway. They tend to be a little bit on the slower side. So saving context feels like the right trade-off. So I think this is super interesting. And what I'm hoping is that Claude is showing leadership here. And this effectively becomes sort of part of the MCP standard and is adopted by other MCP clients. Because this all of these things solve quite a lot of problems, actually. The next... And this is a super common discussion point. The next the next big thing is programmatic tool calling. And it's super common because I end up talking to people a lot. Actually, I'm going to make another video, which I'll publish probably tomorrow, about the idea of open API. 
into MCP and why people think that's a bad idea and the arguments around that. One of the key arguments we see is that often a LLM will need to orchestrate multiple endpoints from your MCP server. So, you know, it will need to say, call, get the information of uh, the user, then add a ticket based on the user ID, maybe load something else in and make another request. And the problem is all of that back and forth with sort of traditional MCP before this solution resulted in all of the result data going into the context window of the LLM whether it needed all of it or not, even if it just needed the ID of the user to complete the job. And so a lot of MCP folks were saying, well, look, this is a reason why just using your standard open API is a terrible idea because you should provide the exact workflow your LLM needs. I think that's a little bit idealistic. You know, the idea that I know a priori, I'm going to build the perfect MCP workflow for every possible workflow that needs to happen. Just, it just doesn't make any sense. I don't know why people would even reason that. Um, I'm sure there's some common workflows where it's helpful, but in reality, if we're going to get the best out of AI, it needs to be able to have a lot of flexibility and be able to compose over an API just like a human does. And what programmatic tool calling does is essentially allows you to achieve that, but doesn't load the information from the results that it doesn't need into the LLM. Because what it does is it generates a Python script. Uh, and I assume this is pretty sandboxed. It generates a Python script that does all of the orchestration for you, leaves that in the memory of the, the sandbox that the code runs in, and then only returns the thing you actually need. So in that case, if you take the example of, you know, I need to create a ticket for a user. In the first time, I'd have to call get the user by name or by email to get the ID, and then I can create a ticket with the ID. I wouldn't need to do that anymore because it would generate a script that does that for me, and the only thing that would be loaded back into memory is probably the ID of the ticket that was created, you know, or some sort of confirmation. And so that's what programmatic tool calling is. Uh, as I understand it, Claude take on the burden here of executing the Python code for you in a sandbox. I assume it's very simplistic, right? All it needs to do is generate simple Python code code that can make fetch calls and that can then take the results, do some transformation over that data and some selection from that data, and then invoke MCP endpoints, basically. And so not fetch calls generally. I, I think it's only going to call MCP endpoints that are, you know, actually um, registered tools. Uh, but I actually think this is pretty smart. I think this takes advantage of the fact that LLMs are very good at writing code, very good at writing Python, and now understand MCP. So I'm really excited about this and how it helps people worry much less about generating the perfect workflow for their API. I still think in general, as you'll see in the other discussion, the other um, video I'm going to post, that an API that's good for, for LLM is probably one that's good for a human also. So, you know, when people argue that, hey, this error was unhelpful to the LLM, you should do better, then I think the same is true for your users. So I think there's a lot of overlap there. Um, but this solves the workflow problem really significantly. Actually, you can probably publish your good API and let the LLM do the work of working out how to orchestrate all the calls and give you ultimate flexibility over all of the different entities and resources in your in your API. So I'm actually quite excited about this. Um, they give an example here that's sort of a multi-stage workflow. We don't need to load all of the information that's coming back from the API into the LLM. We can let that happen inside the, the sandbox code. The one thing that you do need to do is, is register which um, tools are suitable for calling from code. So you can see here they've added to the tools metadata in MCP some sort of allowed callers that opt you into programmatic tool calling. So they've made it opt-in, which sounds smart, I guess, um, but I think most people would opt most things in because um, it's not clear to me what risk is taken by allowing an LLM to call the MCP via an MCP client versus allowing an LLM to generate code to call it. Seems Seems like the risks are probably pretty similar. Maybe I'm being naive there. Let me know in the comments if you disagree, if you think that makes sense. But yeah, you can see here how that all comes together. So that's exciting. Another way of reducing context and getting more out of your existing API infrastructure without less of this debate about delivering the perfect workflow as a new MCP. And then finally, the next edition is adding tool use examples. But what they've effectively done is shown a way of giving input examples here um, into the tool metadata, as I understand it, that shows you what a call looks like. So right now you just get the schema typically that says, you know, this is a 
string, this is a number, this is a description of what that string is. But it's much more helpful usually for the LLM to see an example of what's being called. Now, this takes me back actually to the argument I just made that a API that is good for an LLM is good for a human. And the same is true here. Like when I'm using an API, I rarely look at the schema. I look at the examples, don't you? And LLMs seem to me like they behave much more like humans than machines when we think about machines traditionally. Uh, machines, you know, in my mind would, when I think about the classic automation, would just look at the schema. But actually an LLM, because language based, can look at the example and do much more with that. So being able to add that, I think, is going to make LLMs more successful in using your API. It's going to make your MCP work better. You know, in Zooplo, for example, we will add support for this stuff pretty quickly so that you can extend your MCP for all of these, adding the code execution flag, adding the um, uh, adding the deferred loading, etc., so that you can get the most out of this. And I'm hoping we see a lot of uptake by other MCP clients to, working in similar ways and supporting these behaviors. So that's quite exciting. But you know what? All of this does pose one big question to me. When you look at these changes, it kind of starts to beg the question, why do we need MCP? I am a huge fan of MCP. I love the community. I'm excited about everybody that's working on this stuff and you know that I get to interact with on it. But with these changes, I do look at this now and go, couldn't we have just done this with OpenAPI? Um, one of the reasons not to use OpenAPI is they were quite verbose documents. And so loading that into the context window, I think MCP was a little bit more efficient there. Not tremendously, but a little bit. If we'd have looked at this from having a search the open API and return a filtered view back that goes into the context window, then you know that problem would have been solved by having the tool search but based on open API. Similarly, the LLMs are great at generating REST code based on open API and being able to call them. So we could have used that to generate the programmatic tool calling. An open API is typically already full of examples of how to call the API because that's what humans like and the open API is typically used um, for humans to read the documentation in, I think, in most cases. So it's an interesting question. I wonder if this is getting closer to a world where maybe we didn't need this. I think MCP itself has gotten so much traction now. Obviously, you're doing seeing stuff with MCP UI. I think it actually has a little bit more finesse around auth even though there are many many problems with authentication in mcp i think it's actually the the area that needs the most work but open api would have needed that too but yeah it does make me think i wonder if we'd have started with this viewpoint and with these learnings that we could have just gone all in on open api for llms what do you think